Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, we're gonna look at Power Virtual Agents standalone versus Microsoft Teams. And we'll go through a side-by-side -side comparison on what are those key differences between the two of them. Plus, I'll walk you through a demo as well. So stick around, it'll be fun. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. First, let's take a look at the standalone version of Power Virtual Agents, which comes with a ton of functionality. The big one is that you are able to go ahead and create chatbots in separate environments. You do have the functionality to use both standard and premier connectors with Power Virtual Agents using Power Automate. You also have to get an additional license with your existing Microsoft 365. That license is for your Power Virtual Agents. Here is a summary of the Power Virtual Agents entitlement. Over here, you can see that the chat sessions that made available to you, which is a chat session per tenant per month, is 2000. You also have an add-on availability. The add-on availability gives you the functionality to add a thousand more chat sessions, and these can only be added in increments of a thousand. Keep in mind that this add-on doesn't provide any additional capacity, which is 10 gigs, or any additional file capacity it only allows the total number of sessions. So let's take a look at what licenses need to be assigned. For all the users who are actually creating and managing the chatbots, a per user license does need to be assigned. In addition, a one-time tenant level license needs to be turned on as well. So this means that the end users who are only interacting or chatting with the chatbots, they don't need a license assigned. It's only for those creating and managing the chatbots. So what defines as one complete chat session? Well, a chat session is defined complete if a user's question is answered or if the chat session exceeds 100 minutes or a thousand turns. And a turn basically means one exchange between the user and the chatbot based on whatever the user asked. This is the standalone Power Virtual Agents which can be accessed using your web browser. And on the left side, you can see I have a whole bunch of options such as home, topic, entity, so on and so forth. But on the right side, when I actually click that chatbot icon, this is where I go and select which environment I want to go and access. And as you can see, in one environment, you can go ahead and build multiple bots. So now I'll actually go and select a topic. And as the name suggests, a topic is what topic did you go ahead and build a chatbot? Well, in this case, I've actually gone ahead and built a chatbot to have a interaction to give me some information of devices from the catalog. So when I go and click on the catalog, the first thing you will see are the trigger phrases. And as the name suggests, what is the phrase that triggers a conversation with the chatbot? So these are the ones that I've put in over here, coming in and asking for new device information or just device info or looking for some info. These are the terms that you will normally see an end user ask. But now let's go to the authoring canvas because there's a different I want to show you. Right here in your Power Virtual Agents, when you build a standalone one, if you are making a call or if you're using a Dataverse table, that Dataverse table connector is identified as a premier connector. And I'll show you that. In this case, I actually have a Power Virtual Agent flow, which is created. And as I click on that, I'll go ahead and click this tab. I'll go ahead and open this up. And over here in this flow, remember, it's a standalone Power Virtual Agent. If I were to come in and actually say, add another step for Dataverse, in the Dataverse, you will see these as premier connectors. Something to keep in mind because this will change when we look at it from the team side, which I'll show you in just a minute. But now let's go and do a test of how this flow works. So I'll go back to my Power Virtual Agents and right over here, I'll go ahead and do a test. So my test is going to be device information. And I'll click on that. It's interesting that when you're actually doing this test, it'll show you in which section of your logic you currently are in. So I'll go ahead and select say an Acer, Next, it'll, go and it'll ask me which device, I'll go and select laptop. And then based on the selections you made, it has gone ahead and done a Power Virtual Agents call and returns all the information in a very nice design using the markdown technique. And now I can go ahead and take this chatbot and I can go ahead and publish it in a standalone side of it, or I can embed it somewhere else. I can even share this externally with users. Let's take a look at Power Virtual Agents inside Teams. The first thing, is that the chatbot can be built directly inside Teams. You do not need to go and access it using a web browser. But keep in mind that the Teams add-in needs to be approved by your Teams administrator. 
Also, a Microsoft 365 license for Power Virtual Agents just needs to be turned on. And if you go take a look at your profile, there's actually a checkbox for Power Virtual Agents for Office 365. You are also only given two gigs capacity, and that is per team. And there is no option for you to go ahead and extend that for beyond two gigs. Now keep in mind, the standalone one came with 10 gigs. In Teams, you're only allowed to use standard connectors for say a power automate flow that you're building. And you can do that with no additional cost. Also, the important piece is that when you're using Dataverse inside Teams, it is free as long as you maintain the two gig capacity. So now inside Teams, I come over here on the bottom left to apps. I can go ahead and type in Power Virtual Agents and there I'll be able to see that app as long as it has been approved. Next, once you click on it, this is what your Power Virtual Agent looks like. Remember, this is all inside Microsoft Teams. I can go ahead and select any chatbots to see if any chatbots that I've created, or I can go ahead and create a new chatbot. So I'll go and take a look at this chatbot, which is the exact replica of the one we just showed in the standalone one. As you can see, the look and the feel is almost the exact same. You've got the same options on the left hand side, and you've also got the chatbot to go in and test your environment. I'll go and click on topics and I'll go and pick a very similar one that I just demonstrated to you. And over here, I see you can see that I've gone ahead and added the same trigger faces and I can also go to the authoring canvas. The look and the feel is almost the exact same. Here, as I scroll down, we'll go ahead and take a look at that Power Virtual Agents and the flow that we went and triggered. So now as I come over here, this is where I'm going ahead and making a Power Automate call. Now if I go and click on it, something interesting happens. In the standalone one, when I'm doing it on the browser, it actually opened up another tab in the browser. And as you can see, this is what it is. This way in the chatbots, it goes and opens up a separate tab. Inside Microsoft Team, it actually goes and puts it one step below. So this is what I mean. We've got Power Virtual Agents on the top. Right below is where we have Power Automate. It all puts it directly inside Teams. So here, let's go and take a look at that flow. All right, so when I go and now go into my edit, this looks exactly like the same thing we saw before. However, here, if I go ahead and now search for say Dataverse, in my Dataverse, you notice I do not see that Premier Connector licensing option. As you can remember, licensing op see that licensing option. And this is what it looked like and the standalone one. You see the Premier that shows up over here? However, inside Teams, it does not. This means that as long as you use the Dataverse, the Teams Dataverse with the limit of two gigs, you can go and use that standalone with your Microsoft 365 license. You do not need any additional license. And the overall testing can be done the exact same way. We'll go ahead and do that right now. I'll go and say device info. It asks me the same question as to which manufacturer I want. I'll go ahead and select this one. I'll go ahead and select that device. It's going ahead and running that Power Automate flow the exact same way. And as you can see, I can go ahead and create that same effect directly inside Microsoft Teams as well. And in Teams, when I click on publish, I get these two options options where I can go ahead and open the bot inside Teams, or I can even make it available for other people to share it in their own Teams. So there are a few key takeaway items that you need to be aware of, which also shows the differences between the two. In standalone, you can go ahead and share with external users, while in Microsoft Teams, it's only for your internal users. Standalone, you can go ahead and build your Power Automate flow for both standard and Premier connectors, while well, inside Microsoft Teams, as long as you don't want to pay anything extra, you only have the option to use your standard connectors. In standalone, you get additional capacity. You get 10 gigs of capacity, while in Microsoft Teams, you are only limited to the two gigs that you have. Also, in the standalone, you've got out of the box heavy analytics functionality provided you to actually gauge and assess how your chatbots are doing, while in Microsoft Teams, you do not have this functionality. So hopefully this video has helped you identify what is the key differences between the standalone chatbots versus that in Microsoft Teams and what are the key things that you need to be mindful of as you decide where you're gonna go ahead and build your chatbot. So as always, keep using Power Virtual Agents. Hey everyone, hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, can you help me help you? Can you subscribe to this YouTube channel? Because remember, I provide fresh content on a weekly basis and it's 100% free. So if you have subscribed, thank you so much and pass the word. But if you haven't, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.